I would like to thank the organizers of this workshop uh, for the invitation, which I followed with pleasure. And secondly, uh, I would highly appreciate the intention of Russia to uh, increase the number of magnetic observatories in Russia, which, uh, which is of high importance for the data users because uh, the distribution of intermagnet observatories in this territory is very rare. So, uh, let me start with an overview of my presentation. I will start with an introduction. Next I will speak about the set of instruments which were installed. Uh, then um, I will speak a little bit about our data logger and then I will come to the special situation in the observatories which we uh, instrumented with these equipment and last but not least I will give some uh, conclusion and outlook. Um, this map shows the, the observatories uh, which we um, are in cooperation with and uh, this map was for the, uh, all the red stars or the, most of these red stars were established during Mio Aramandea's leadership of our section uh, geomagnetic field in GFZ Potsdam uh, it was the time between 2005 and 2009 when she had this position when she was my boss and um, during that time uh, the most of these red stars were established. Uh, let me give a small uh, overview where we are present. First we are of course here in Limec and Wings. These are our uh, German, the both of the German observatories which we are responsible for. Uh, we further have uh, contributions to European observatories which is here in um, Bulgaria, Panagyurishta and Romania, Solari. Um, then we have one uh, cooperation observatory in Bolivia. It is Via Remedios. Next one is the island of St. Helena, Kidman's Hope in South, in, sorry, in Namibia. Uh, two observatories in India are under our cooperation, Alibak and Hyderabad, and uh, which is, will be the uh, topic of my talk here, are the three Russian observatories here, Yakutsk, Magadan, and Karatunka, and uh, the newest, our newest project is here at the Azores, at uh, the island of Santa Maria. Here you see the list of the observatories and you see uh, here in um, the chronological form uh, when uh, we started the cooperation. Uh, Nimek and Winks are the eldest. This was already before we are at time. Um, the same with we are medios, but uh, the first during we are at time was Panagiurste and then we continued until now, which is Santa Maria. Please. Um, the, um, we, uh, with all the um, organizations, we agreed in contracts, and uh, especially with, uh, with the Russian cooperation partners, um, the uh, cooperation agreement was uh, like this. But our institute provides the instruments and the expertise and we of course install the uh, equipment and our partners give the, the buildings of course, uh, the premises and um, provide the computers and the management of the computers and the networks. Um, this is a set of instruments which uh, was used in the most cases for absolute measurements, of course, uh, the iFlux, we used the size theodolite equipped with the Danish magnetometer. Um, 
you can see here the electronic unit, which is a sensor, and this is um, here on the uh, telescope of the theodolite, and an overhauser proton magnetometer made by GEMSYS in Canada. And uh, this set of instruments is very similar to most of our observatories, which we have in cooperation, especially in NEMEC and WINGS. Uh, we are using the same set. Uh, in one case, with, which was in Magadan Observatory, we used a little bit different set of instruments. This, uh, this is a set of variometers, which we installed in most of our observatories. And uh, this was also the case in Yakutsk Observatory and in Paratunga. We are using uh, the Oberhauser proton magnetometer uh, made by GEMSYS for uh, recording of the total intensity variations. And this three component flux gate bar core magnetometer made by uh, Danish Metrological Institute, which is now Danish Technical University. You see here the, the sensor. This is a suspended version. You can see here a big marble block with the sensors. And this is the electronics unit. So, and what I mentioned before is this set of instruments, which we installed in Magadan Observatory. This is this um, uh, also Genesis original uh, instrument, uh, SM90R, but uh, it was um, purchased by the company Geomark in France. And uh, this is a French um, three-component ring core magnetometer which we purchased long ago from IPGP. Um, we, uh, we were not satisfied with this instrument in the beginning, but on MioAra's uh, initiative, it was improved. And so we could uh, install this instrument in Magadan Observatory. Please. Um, the data logger, which we are using, is a self-made one, which was um, was developed and also uh, made in our Adolf Schmidt Observatory in Nimec. Uh, here you see the general features. It is a continuously recording, of course. It has a high data security, lightning protection, of course. It is GPS synchronized. We have arbitrary data access, and um, it is, has a flexible data handling and has a possibility of automatic data transmission to internet. Uh, this is the scheme of this uh, data logger. Um, the base is this computer. It is um, um, yeah, based on low power <coughs> electronics. Uh, it is uh, called MPC. Uh, it operates a normal DOS operational system. Has um, LTT1 parallel uh, interface and four serial interfaces. And uh, by means of the parallel uh, interface, the ADC and multiplexer is controlled. And by means of that, the data of the three components magnetometer and the temperature are recorded. And uh, the clock synchronization is made by one of the serial interfaces. And one, the next uh, serial interface is used for the control of the Oberhauser proton magnetometer to get the uh, total field variometer data. And the third one is used to transmit the data to a normal PC. And this normal PC is connected by means of a local RIA network with a Linux PC. Uh, all these units are uh, located in the variometer building. So they are uh, as most as possible non-magnetic. And uh, the other part is located in the technical building or main building or something like that. Um, the hardware, as I already mentioned, is a 
20 bit ADC. Um, we are using a 2 hertz um, sampling rate, 4 hertz is maximum. Um, as I already mentioned, the four cons are partly used, the fourth is not used, and the parallel one is used for the ADC control. And uh, DOS PC and Linux PC are network connected, so we have always arbitrary data access. Next, please. This is a, a photo of this data logger. You can see here again the electronic unit of the FGE, three component magnetometer. This is the base uh, plate of this electronic unit. And this unit, this board, is the, our data logger hardware. You see here this uh, small PC. And uh, this is an enlargement to two more um, serial interfaces. And this is ADC and analog electronics around. These are the uh, converters to, uh, the, to, to the connection, uh, which is done uh, consequently by optical fiber cables to avoid any problems <coughs> of lightning. Next, please. This is a, a picture of the screen of the DOS PC. Um, you see here um, minute values in, in that uh, part of the screen, and here downwards um, are the monetary values to per second. And uh, you can see here that we um, have a, a data sampling of only five seconds. Uh, for the proton magnetometer, but one second is possible. This type of uh, Oberhauser magnetometer is able uh, to be operated at a sampling rate of one second. And here we have several status uh, signals to see always the situation of the logger. Next, please. And this is a screen of the Linux PC, which shows the most recent 24 hours of the magnetic field recordings. Um, I selected here Magadan. You see here in red the total intensity. In yellow uh, is the horizontal intensity. In green, declination. In purple, uh, the vertical intensity. And this is important uh, graph, which shows the delta F which is the difference between the recorded F and the calculated F from the vector magnetometer, which shows immediately if there's a problem of the vector magnetometer. The scales are different. Here we have the scale of the uh, normal magnetic uh, channels. And here on the right, we have the delta F uh, scale to see uh, immediately any problem. Um, let us go now to the special uh, observatories. Um, we started with Yakutsk. We provided the complete set of instruments, so two absolute instruments uh, and um, two variometer instruments. Um, and um, these instruments, the, the variometers were installed and uh, absolute instruments were um, demonstrated uh, in the absolute house. Next, please. Um, we installed in uh, two phases, in September uh, 2006 and June 2007. We made an instruction of the personnel of the observatory on site in Yakutsk and also in Nimec. We invited the responsible person. Uh, for, uh, two times. So we had first several problems with absolute measurements. The quality was not sufficient in the first time, but it was improved in the meantime. And um, so Yakutsk became um, inter an intermagnet observatory IMO in 2010 at the last intermagnet meeting. This was decided. And 
the 2009 data are nearly ready for submission to Intermagnet. Next, please. This is, uh, are the baselines of Yakut's observatory. Uh, you see here in the normal intermagnet um, screen, this, uh, the baselines um, for horizontal intensity, declination, uh, vertical intensity, uh, delta F, what I already mentioned. Uh, and this is, uh, these are also delta F values. These are the, the minute uh, mean value differences of um, um, this, uh, of, of the calculated total intensity and the recorded total intensity. Uh, you see here some drift in the baseline. It, it, it is caused by the big temperature variations at that place. Uh, we ha you have to consider that we have summer temperatures outside there of plus 30 degrees and winter temperatures of minus 50 sometimes. And uh, it is not very easy to get the temperature stable enough. Um, but uh, we monitor this problem by means of the baselines. Next, please. Um, and this is uh, are the daily mean values over the year 2009, over this uh, complete year. And you see um, yeah, a normal behavior. Uh, there are some data gaps. They are caused by uh, problems with power supply. We are still faced with this problem at this observatory um, because uh, the power supply situation is not the best there, but uh, it is uh, due to the, um, yeah, the, uh, um, the doings of our colleagues in the observatory uh, much more improved uh, in comparison to the beginning. Uh, two photos of this observatory, the absolute house and the Leiningita house. And you can see here it is, uh, in, uh, it is surrounded with a lot of dachi, as uh, it is called here in Russia. Uh, so um, it is uh, a clean, rather clean magnetic situation. Uh, only the cars of the owners of the houses around are a little bit disturbing factor, but um, we can see from uh, the uh, from our test, which we have done, that this, uh, these disturbances are uh, small enough, and um, the colleagues there uh, got arrangements with with the surrounding people uh, to uh, get um, or to to uh, survive the observatory in a quite enough environment. Next, please. Let's go to um, Magadan. Uh, Magadan Observatory is really um, located <coughs> in the village of Stekolny. Um, we also provided the complete set of instruments, absolute and variometers, and as I already mentioned, we uh, um, use here the French um, wind core three component magnetometer uh, BM398 and uh, the SM90 Oberhauser proton magnetometer. Next, please. Um, we installed the uh, instruments in 2007. The same situation as in Yakut. We instructed the personnel on site and in NIMEC Observatory. Um, and we had some problems there uh, with perturbations from the ionophones, which are originally operated at the observatory. We get some interferences, but we solved the problem by software. And um, also from the uninterrupted power supply units, we got some problems, and we are now uh, going to solve also this problem. Um, Magadan uh, was accepted to be IMO in August 2009, and we are now doing the preparation of the 2009 data for submission. Next, please. The baselines uh, here a little bit more stable. 
then in the output, this was a baseline jump here, which may happen uh, in an observatory. We, we do not know exactly the reason of that. We have to live with it. Um, the, the situation is a little bit more stable because uh, the, the inner temperature of the variometer house uh, is more stable. This house is a little bit smaller, so it is easier to uh, make the continuous heating. Next, please. And uh, last but not least, two photos of it. The absolute house and the variometer house, and both the houses were uh, newly renovated when we arrived um, for the installation of our instruments. Next, please. The third of our stations is uh, Paratunga at um, Kamchatka Peninsula. We only provided variometers. Absolute instruments were already present. Um, and uh, we installed these instruments uh, in uh, the next piece. We installed in September 2009. Um, and uh, we made the personal instruction also on site and in IMEC. And uh, unfortunately, we are faced with a problematic uh, situation there. It uh, seems to be a, pro a human problem. Uh, we do not have access on the data due to the special rules at uh, Kamchatka Peninsula. The administrators are not ready or not able to allow um, the, the access on the data. It's a, a stupid problem, but uh, we have to also to live with that. And the colleagues in uh, Paratunga are working on the situation to get a solution. Please. Uh, also, uh, two pictures. This is a new built absolute house, which was nearly ready when we were there. And this is a view uh, over the complete um, territory of the observatory. This is the technical building, the variometer house, and here you can see a little bit the old absolute house, which was replaced by this new building. Next, please. Um, I would like uh, to acknowledge, as I already mentioned, my former boss, Niara Mandea. Uh, she initiated all the cooperations um, and also, of course, the cooperation with these three observatories. So we have now not only three um, intermagnet observatories in Russia, but five. Uh, I also appreciate uh, the cooperation efforts which were done by the um, persons in charge which is Alexei Moiseev in Yakutsk, Igor Podelsky in Magadan, and uh, Ilham Bek Babakanov at Paratunka Observatory. Uh, let me please include oh. upgraded three of the Russian um, observatories to Intermagnet, and two of them we are successfully to join Intermagnet up to now. Um, as I already mentioned, we have a special situation in Paratunga which is under clarification. And after its clarification, we plan to upgrade also Khabarovsk Observatory, which is also in the same uh, institute as Magadan and Paratunga. Thank you very much for your attention.